Hi, it's Emma from Beacon and today we're going to talk to you about ADHD. According to a study by the Centre for Disease Prevention and Control, approximately 11% of pupils are now thought to have Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. This means that your class could potentially have at least three pupils who might find it almost impossible to physically sit still and focus their attention on your lessons. So, let's look at the most common misunderstandings about ADHD. Number one, ADHD is not caused by a bad diet or poor parenting. It's actually associated with structural and chemical alterations in the brain when children are born. Number two, ADHD is not a condition that is exclusively diagnosed in boys. Girls can be affected too. Statistically, 13.2% of boys and 5.6% of girls are diagnosed with ADHD. Often, girls are more adept at mimicking social situations or learning rote responses, so their symptoms might be better hidden and therefore go undiagnosed. Number three, ADHD does not happen in only one setting. If you've got ADHD, it's a universal feature across all areas of your life. At home, at school, in the supermarket, wherever. Number four, teachers cannot make an ADHD diagnosis. They can support parents and assist in the diagnostic process by signposting pupils to paediatricians who are qualified to make a medical diagnosis. And number five, medication can't cure ADHD, it can merely help to manage the symptoms. So, what are the most common symptoms to look for? For attention deficit, you might see, for example, a short attention span, the child might be easily distracted, forgetful, unable to carry out instructions, they might flit from task to task, they'll have difficulty with organisation, and they might have trouble completing tasks and seeing things through to the end. For hyperactivity, you might see constant fidgeting, excessive physical movement, excessive talking, an inability to wait their turn, constant interruptions, no sense of danger. Remember, people can experience inattentiveness or hyperactivity, or they may have both and the symptoms need to be present for at least six months in order to get a diagnosis. Symptoms also need to be developmentally inappropriate for the child's age for ADHD to be considered. Understanding that ADHD is a genuine neurological condition that affects how your pupils think and behave is hugely important in working out ways to manage them effectively in your class. Many of the strategies for helping pupils manage ADHD are designed to improve attention and organisation, so of course they will also benefit all of the other children in your class too. My name's Emma from Beacon School Support and we've currently got a free guide to managing children who present attention-seeking behaviours. Head over to our website to download it now. It's packed full of advice, tips and strategies that you can start using in your classroom tomorrow. At Beacon, we work with schools to help train their staff to improve their own capacity for managing behaviour through training, advice and consultancy at all levels. We're based in the Midlands in the United Kingdom. If you've enjoyed this video, why not sign up for our newsletter and that contains strategies and resources about managing behaviour in school follow our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you next time.